My next guest is a politician. He's the former leader of the Democratic Alliance, the former leader of the opposition in the National Assembly. He is no stranger to the public and he plans on uniting individuals, civil society, non-governmental organizations, religious bodies and smaller political parties under a movement for one South Africa. On that note, it's a warm welcome to you, Mr. Muzi Mani. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, looking forward to it. It's, it's good to see you out and about again. I just want to know, since, since you, you know, you've retired from, from the Democratic Alliance, have you caught up on sleep? Are you enjoying time with your family? What have you been <laughs> up to? I've been training, uh, which I really enjoy. <laughs> so I do a lot of running. I actually should have been doing a run this morning. Wow. So I sacrificed to be here. But uh, more than anything, I've been... Uh, We've been quite busy, you know, mm. uh, setting up the movement. That's been a really exciting journey for us because it's important that we focus South Africans on a vision that is different to what is currently happening at the moment. Mm. So that's kept me quite busy. I've had good times with my uh, wife and kids. I've had a time to... They, they're quite delightful that I de uh, d uh, delighted that I get to take them to school more permanently and I get yeah. to attend events at school which I wouldn't ordinarily be able to do. So... So it's really been good. I feel much stronger and healthier. Okay. I mean, last night, uh, well, Thursday night, you had the pleasure of actually watching Sono from your couch. So that's what you mentioned yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, in that yeah. article you pinned on News24. I mean, what was that experience like for you watching it from uh, the couch this time around? You know, of course, <clears throat> like any other person, you, you miss certain aspects of Sono. Yeah. You know? I, I think you realize more than anything that the theater that is Parliament is actually so important for the people of South Africa. And at this point in time, it's important for the wrong reasons. I think, um, so, so, so there were some aspects of it that I missed. I, yeah. I, I don't miss the red carpet stuff. I don't miss, you know, the stresses every, of the day. I mean, I, I was thinking on the day, man, my wife would be busy with all of things, yeah. getting ready, and then we'd, we'd get there. I don't miss that. In fact, I don't, I don't agree with it at all. But I, I think watching it, it's a bit like when you've played football and when you are in the pitch, you know, tackles and all of those things look good. Mm. But when you step out and watch as a citizen who is waiting to say, hey, hang on, this country is in trouble. There are many issues in this country that we need to be talking about. I, I must be honest, like many South Africans, I, I sit there watching and thinking to myself, the solutions to our country don't sit here. You, I mean, you penned an article, I mean, News24 yesterday, yeah. and you literally called it an expensive circus. So, so, I mean, based on what the president outlined and, and how the uh, day actually unfolded, what are your comments and thoughts on, on Sona this year? Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I call it that because I think there are other... I, if you were facing a budget crisis, yeah. the president in his speech says, we have a fiscal crisis. Yeah. To put together a party like that, I think, means the words ring hollow. Because now suddenly you are telling people we're broke, but hey man, we're having a great party. Yeah. That to me does not make sense. When I listen to the speech, there are a lot of... Business efficiency is one of the things that I think this presidency has sought to get right. It's quicker to open a business today, no one can mm. deny that. There are some efficiencies that are put on the system, which are really good. But business efficiency alone is but one process. It's like the ability to be able to print receipts and do right things. We should be doing that, and we should not be celebrating. But there are massive issues in this country. Yeah. We talk about ESCOM. The president three years ago spoke about splitting it into three. He comes back now. He says he's going to split it into three. Last year he spoke about... So just... Just that infrastructure for the economy. And I thought there wasn't a deliberate plan to say, how do we ensure that actually we don't have load shedding? We don't actually need load shedding in this country. This has been something that's gone on for 11 years. Mm. Electricity demand has actually declined. Which tells me that actually, if we were much more aggressive, we shouldn't be looking forward to 18 months of load shedding. Uh, with days that are special being taken out. I, yeah. I, I agree with the previous tweet. So... So I think that's a challenge. SAA is a stark warning. That we have an airline today that will be grounded because three years ago, decisions that were supposed to be made are not being made. And even today, decisions that should be made are not being made. Tells me that we, our words eventually start to ring hollow. These are big things. When you come to education, there's no denying the fact that we can say to our kids, 
you must read for meaning by the age of 10. But we have teachers who are controlled by unions. And frankly, if you've got money in this country, you can buy the best education. And if you are like more than 54% of the people in this country who are poor, the education that you're getting in this country is simply not good enough. I'm sorry. Ten years from now, we're going to have kids who can't do maths and science. Mm. We're going to have kids who have dropped out of school. And we're going to have kids who ultimately, competitively speaking, will be left behind. So, so you obviously are now busy with uh, MOSA, as it's been termed, movement um, for one South Africa. I mean, now as a citizen, you're on the couch, you're watching Sona from home this time around, but, but you're also obviously busy with your movement. Is this a political party? Is this just a civil society movement? How would you describe it? It's and a, what a, is the offering? It's a movement. It's a movement. Okay. And, I, and I think, you know, when you start with political parties, we've got 48 in this country. To add 49 simply is not workable. You've just got too many. But this is a movement. In fact, today I'm doing a consultative forum where we... So we're having some technical issues your mic. We're just going to give you another mic. But, but I mean, um, just, just for those who've just tuned in, of course, I was just asking uh, you about uh, your movement for One South Africa that you've uh, obviously um, been so busy with, apart from resting and catching up with your family. Just, just walk us through what that actually entails, what the offering is. Yeah, for, for us, we're saying we can bring together South Africans of different races to coalesce around a vision of one South Africa. We're convinced that actually we can challenge the electoral act to make sure that we can directly elect people. Because at this point in time, if I said to you today, I said to you, so who's your MP and who's your public rep? And you yeah. probably wouldn't know that. Yeah. So I'm saying let's get direct and know that. Let's use technology to talk to people directly so that we elect them directly. So, and ultimately, let's fight for an inclusive economy. So this movement will bring together different aspects of society. And what we're saying is we want to bring change in this country. I am committed to saying we can build a South Africa where black and white can live together prosperously and peacefully next to each other. So, so we're going to be working hard, and the next 18 months are going to be something to see. And our offer is to say we're going to recruit at least, we've already started to recruit South Africans, there are now well over yeah. there are just a few thousand South Africans who have registered, we want to get to a hundred thousand we certainly want to go out immediately be able to show a number of different political formations coming together, that's already started to happen we're seeing civil society engage with us at this consultative forum today we'll be able to say, here are some steps and here's a program going forward our offer is to say let the people become the activists let the people own their movement. It's mm. their movement. It's got nothing to do with me at the end of the day. It's the people's movement. What has the response been like from the public then? Unbelievable. Citizens are, are encouraging. They've come on their numbers. As I said to you, we've, had, we've seen thousands of people register uh, on, on, on our online platforms. We're seeing people even on the ground saying we're going to form structures. So we've got like communities in all nine provinces meeting together to say how can we do this thing. We're seeing political formations come together. And for us, we ultimately say let's not talk ideology. My kids are not going to ask me about what ideology. Am I a socialist, communist, Marxist, all of that. Whilst I understand mm. the lineage of that. What I think is more important is to say they want a plan. They want to be able to know at the end of the day, hey, well, are you going to fix education? Are you going to make sure South Africans are safe? Are you going to make sure we work together? And are we going to make sure we focus on the future? One of the yeah. things that I don't think we talk enough about is the effects of climate change. I don't think we talk enough about the effects of technology as it will do work. The facts on the table are the jobs that we have today are going to be obsolete in a few years' time. Yeah. So we've got to think harder about saying, how do we prepare a child who's getting into school now for the world of work tomorrow? So, so practically, what does that look like? I mean, yes, uh, it, it, it's all fine well to say that this is the ideals and this is what you stand for, but, but what is the practical solution going well, forward? Well, practically, we're, as I say, we're, we're coalescing. Okay. We'll be setting up together multiple activist events all across the country. Mm. We'll be using technology to engage people and to rate our public representatives. And then when it comes closer to time, we'll obviously directly vote for the people we want to get to represent us in, in councils, legislatures, and, mm. and, and, um, and um, parliament, ultimately. Um, you also, in your uh, article yesterday, actually mentioned the president, or called the president a Mr. PR machine. I mean, based on the context of that um, um, article, what are, you, what are you alluding to? You know, never before, uh, well, I've been following politics for a long time yeah. in this country, and one of the things I've started to notice now is how American 
our president is starting to look. You know, we have images of him mounting in Kwasi. Like, we now have briefings outside the presidential jet. We now have, and we have all of these images of the president smiling and as if he's always smiling. Thursday night was not a smiling moment. If a, he's, he, he's a father, he's, he's in his 60s. If a young MP addressed him like that, and he didn't respond to that, that it's his business to get this country working, and that gets delayed for an hour and a half, and he says nothing, that values of our constitution are being challenged, and values of reconciliation, and values of, of actually what needs to happen, and he doesn't say anything, that to me is a concern. It means sometimes we have a president who's not willing to get into the fight. And that's a concern. Because actually, there was a moment for a leader to stand up and say, Bona, we don't talk to each other like that. Because if we talk to each other like that, my kids, my kids were watching parliament. Yeah. Do they learn from that that tomorrow it's okay for them to go to their school principal and just say, I sit down with yeah. Do they learn that actually, it's a, it's a, what kind of values are we transmitting? And leadership requires you to stand up before a nation and say, that's not okay. We might disagree on the politics, but that's not okay. What's also not okay is that the people's business, 58 million citizens are sitting at home watching a theater. You go around here in the streets of this community in Linden, ask them, what do you think of the, of the sauna? Almost all of them can't tell you the plan, yeah. but they can tell you, ah, it was nice, we saw this one, and others will say, I just didn't watch it. Now, that is a concern. If we want all of us to work together, a moment like State of the Nation is a moment for us to mobilize together. So that's what I'm saying. Cut the fanfare, cut the circus, cut the dress-ups, cut the dinkum. You know, I don't know what else they put in there. And let's get together, let's get to business. It was never like this. Under President Mandela, it was never like this. Under President Mbeki, State of the Nation used to happen at 10 o'clock in the morning or early in the, yeah. in the morning. It was a straightforward delivery because we knew what the business of the day was. We don't have money for this circus. And so as a citizen, I'm sitting around going, I am a, these people are having a, it's like saying, let's have cake and champagne when the people at home are wondering whether the lights are going to come on tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, uh, you've obviously had time to reflect, um, hence you've been able to pen that article as well. But, but in hindsight, looking at your journey and, yeah. and how far you've come, what would you say has been some of the biggest lessons you've learned about Musi to date and, and, and perhaps some of the struggles you've had to overcome? Look, uh, one, I think leadership is a high premium. Um, comes at a very big price and it's always tough. And I've had to learn to say, you know, you've you got to grow that. It's like something that you've got to be much stronger at. I also think that sometimes parliament and politics can be in a bubble. Politicians live... They even talk their own language. They... they you know, I just sometimes, sometimes when I listen to some of the things that we used to say in Parliament, I think, what, what would my mother even think of this stuff, you know? And in truth, I think we've lost an ability to connect with people. And that's something that coming back now, and actually, let's set up this movement, it's born out of the fact that people in the streets, some of the things that we worry about, we worry, read in the newspaper, whatever. They don't care about those things. They just care that they want a meal today. They care that they want a job. They care that they, they, care that they want to be safe. They, they, that's, those are things that I think sometimes even parliament itself doesn't respond to. Mm. We, we kind of don't talk about those things. So, so for me, that's been a big thing to say, let's get back our activists. More than anything, like when, when a clinic down the road doesn't have medicines, where is the community going to the clinic to say, eh, eh, we need medicine. So when are kids? Let's you know? leave it there. We're actually going to continue with this after the break. Of course, we're in conversation with Musi Maimani, catching up about what he's been up to uh, since resigning from the Democratic Alliance and, and starting his new movement, a movement for one South Africa. It's time for a quick ad break. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Weekend Dawn. We're just wrapping up our conversation with Musi Maimani. Uh, just perhaps uh, catching up with him, what he's been up to since leaving the Democratic Alliance and what the new movement for One South Africa actually entails. And Musi, just before the break, um, you were outlining just uh, some of, uh, reflecting rather on some of the lessons you've learned uh, since yeah. leaving. Um, do you want to continue with uh, what sure. the insights have been? I mean, what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, you send a child to a clinic, right? 
young person who wants to go get ARVs. Yeah. The nurses now suddenly are like, hey, we must lecture you about morality and all of that. Whilst I understand that, but I also do think that it's time that communities actually work together. I've been setting up this maths and science center because I think young people must be able to spend afternoons be able to do maths and science center. Because when we do that, we prepare young people for the future. Yeah. When you look at it in real numbers, our maths and science matriculants are declining, if not just negligibly stable. And more than anything, the quality of the pass around that issue is so poor that in fact our kids are not going to be able to compete at a, at a, at a global stage. So, so I'm saying let's do that, let's, let's get involved. And ultimately, for me, I'm saying let's build this One South Africa because mm. One South Africa isn't just black people and white people, colored people, Indian people getting together, but One South Africa says our economy at this moment works for some, not for all. Yeah. Let's bring everybody together and build this One South Africa. So this movement is about saying, let's bring everybody together. Let's mobilize society. Because ultimately, change occurs when citizens change. Mm. All right. I've been told we're running out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for letting us know what you've been up to. And, and all the best with your future endeavors. You mentioned leadership as, as a key um, factor in, in your movement going forward. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. And, and we wish you all the best from Weekend Dawn. Much appreciated. Drops mic. Oh, <laughs> that was risky my money, of course. Uh, the former leader of the Democratic Alliance, now the leader of the Movement for One South Africa. Again, as I mentioned, uh, chatting to us about what he's been up to uh, since leaving the Democratic Alliance, what his future plans entail, and of course, uh, some of the key points he will be focusing on uh, from here on too. It's now over to Jacob. He's standing by for a wrap of uh, the Newsweek for this week. Stay tuned.